on our last video, we looked at bounds. We clearly saw how we find the lower bound and how we find the upper bound. Today, we are going to concentrate on application of bounds. This is how do we use bounds when we are using our normal mathematical applications. That is addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. Normally, bounds help us to find the maximum possible outcome and the minimum possible outcome. Now, the logic tells us whenever we want to get the maximum possible outcome and our application is addition, we shall need to add all our numbers when we are taking their upper bounds. So when we use the upper bounds, this will help us to get the biggest possible answer in the addition. In the same case of multiplication, in order to get the biggest possible answer and our activity involves multiplication, we shall also use the upper bounds. The upper bound for the first number and the upper bound for the second number. And if there are more than two numbers and we are multiplying, then we shall multiply upper bound times upper bound times upper bound for all the numbers that will be given. But for subtraction and for division, it's a little bit different. When we look at the common sense of subtracting, it involves reducing the quantity. So, Definitely, I must have the biggest or the upper bound. But because I must subtract, I cannot subtract the upper bound. My answer will not be the biggest. In order to get the biggest answer after subtracting, then I must subtract lower bound. This means upper bound minus lower bound will give me the maximum or the biggest possible outcome. The same with division. I should have a big number and I should divide by a small number so that my answer becomes the biggest possible answer. But when we are carrying on finding the smallest or the minimum possible answer, this will require us to add and get a small possible answer, I will be required to add the lower bounds. Because lower bound plus lower bound, I will be getting a small answer. On the same way, if I am multiplying 
I should also multiply lower bound times lower bound so that I get the smallest possible answer. One example is perimeter. Everybody knows perimeter is adding all uh, lengths around the given shape. If I want to get the smallest possible perimeter, it means I will add lower bound plus lower bound plus lower bound according to the number of sides of the given shape. But when we want to subtract and we need the smallest possible answer, I will subtract lower bound with upper bound. Because if I have a small number and I subtract something big, my answer will become so small. The same with division. If I have lower bound and I divide by upper bound, my final answer will become very small. Now let's compare the two. When you look at the upper bound, you would realize upper plus upper to get maximum. But here, lower plus lower to get minimum. Upper minus lower to get biggest answer. But here, Lower minus upper to get smallest answer. Upper times upper to get bigger answer. Lower times lower to get smallest answer. And finally, upper divided by lower, I get maximum answer. And now, lower divided by upper, it will give me my small answer. Now, let's look at a few examples to see how the application of bounds works. Example number one. One side of a square is six to the nearest centimeter. We said to the nearest centimeter means to the nearest ones. And ones, it means one. So when I divide by two, I get 0 0.5. So, six plus 0 0.5, I get my upper bound. And six minus 0 0.5, I get my lower bound. So, remember, they are asking us to find Biggest possible area. Remember this is a square. And the formula for finding area of a square is side times side. But if I want area maximum, it means I will have to multiply upper bound times upper bound. So that I get the biggest possible answer. And if I multiply 6.5 times 6.5, it will give me 42.25. That is the one example of how we apply the application of bounds in a question. Let's look at example number two. We are given the length of a rectangle as 70, but this 70 is to the nearest tenth. And we know tenth simply means ten. Ten divided by two, I will get five. So, my upper bound will be 70 plus five. 75. My lower bound will be 70 minus 5. 
65. So this will be the bounds for my length. Now when you read for the width, it will tell you width is 7.4 meter to nearest 10. Tenth. So, tenth is 0 0.1. When I divide by 2, I get 0 0.05. So, I will take 7.4, I will add 0 0.05, and I will get 7.45 as my upper bound. 7.4, I will subtract 0 0.05 and I will get 7.35 as my lower bound. Hence, this will become my bound for widths. Remember, these first ones were for my length. Now, part A. Find biggest possible perimeter. Remember, to find perimeter of a rectangle, it will be length plus length plus width plus width. And since we are looking for the biggest possible, this means I will have to add all upper bounds. So, the upper bound for the length is 75 and the upper bound for the width is 7.5. So, I will add 75 plus 75 plus 7.45 plus 7.45 and it will give me 164.9. Remember, this is finding the biggest possible perimeter. First, we got our upper and lower bound and second we got our upper and lower bound for my width. Let's look at part B. When you look at part B it's asking us to find the least possible area. And remember area of a rectangle is length times width. But if I want area minimum, I will have to take the lower bound, that is 65, times the lower bound of width, that is 7.35. Remember, I'm finding area that is length times width. So, my lower bound is 65 for length, times my up my lower bound is 7.35 for width. And when I multiply, I get 477.75. Example number 3. Here we see another question. We are given A and we are told A is 200 centimeter to the nearest hundreds. Now once we see nearest hundreds, it means 100 over 2 gives us 50. So the upper bound will be 250 because 200 plus 50. The lower bound will be 150 because 200 minus 50. This is upper, this is lower. When you look at B, it is 9 centimeter to nearest one. When we see one, it means one divided by two, we get 0 0.5. So, for the upper bound, it will be 9 plus 0 0.5, giving us 9.5. And for the lower bound, it will be 9 minus 0 0.5. It gives us 8.5. So now, we have got the upper bound, lower bound for A. Upper bound, lower bound for 
B. Now part A. Find biggest answer of 2A minus B. Remember, we are looking for the biggest answer. And we have A minus B. For biggest answer, A, we shall take upper. B, we shall take lower. So, this will mean 2 times 250 minus lower is 8.5. 250 times 2, 500. Minus 8.5. So, 500 minus 8.5 will give us 491.5. Let's look at B. Find the smallest answer when A is dividing with B. Remember, the application says when I'm dividing and I want small answer, means the top number should be lower bound and the bottom number should be upper bound so that I get the smallest answer. So, A, lower bound is 150 over 5 times B, but B should be upper bound. So, now, 9.5, when I multiply it to 5, I will get 47.5. And finally, it will now be 150 divided by 47.5. Point five, that will give us 3.1578947337. This is according to the display of the calculator. If they don't want you to show the whole display, you will be told to round off to how many uh, place values. Now this is the application of bounds. Thank you for watching. If you have enjoyed the video, you may subscribe and like. My name is Mr. Ishengoma.